Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 33 of This Week in K-Pop. In this episode, we talk about Taeyang, Jin, Park Myung-soo in Primary, Yu Song-un, San E, and Miss A. My name is Steven, and with me is co-host josh i don't know why you keep calling me brand new i mean we've done this hey hey you're brand new until i say you're not brand new anymore fine all right fine you got, I got to haze you a little bit i gotta make you know put weird shit up your butt no man oh that's not that wasn't in our contract that's not how hazing works this right. is a, this is a k-pop contract <laughs> you're not my slave <laughs> um for you <laughs> Oh, please stop. All right. Uh, This Week in K-Pop is a discussion podcast that covers the week's K-Pop news and music video reactions. And each week, Josh and I will alternate on picking the best song of the week. And this week, Josh has the pick. So, what's your favorite song? And with my powerful pick, um, it actually came uh, between two songs. But I just have had this song on repeat since it came out. Um, Obviously, Taeyang's Linga Linga. And, um, yeah, this is, in my opinion, a really awesome song. I really like the style. Um, it fits my style more than it fits Steven's, so I'm glad I got the pick this week. That's true. Sometimes the picks always are like, please, please pick this song. And then Kelvin would pick some bumfuck song I've never heard of. <laughs> um, now, Taya, we're going to talk a lot about, I guess, our feelings Uh, to the comments (laughs) of our reaction video. So if you haven't seen it, you can watch our reaction video for this on YouTube at This Week in K-Pop, which is the first time we even saw or heard the song. And boy, howdy. We got a lot of flack for that. We got a lot of flack for our reaction, our honest reaction, our honest reaction. Well, to be fair, they didn't even remember you were talking. That's true. They only gave me shit. (laughs) That's true. Only gave me shit. so true. I, I was saying really good things about the video, about the song, and obviously people want to talk about negative things. They don't want to talk about points that they agree with me on. But. Which, which makes sense. That's how commenters work. So if you didn't watch it, um, uh, for me personally, I uh, didn't I, – I was not as negative as I think the people oh, yeah, uh, definitely not. came out. But definitely I just not. thought the song was okay. Um, I've listened to it many, many times since, uh, doing the reaction video and it's, it's not bad. Like I will, he- I will, you know, ring, ring, a ling, a ling. Like that's catchy in its own right. Um, I just didn't expect a song like this. I'm mm. still, you know, I listen to wedding dress and where are you at? And I love, I need a girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I girl. like, I just, I wanted that Taeyang back. Yeah. I didn't want the kind of, you know, faux thuggy hip hop kind of Taeyang, which he's good at. To be fair, of all the Big Bang members, yeah, he got that. Yeah. Um, I just didn't want, I guess, this song, and you know, Josh. Yeah, yeah maybe those those songs are more your style. I mean, yes. I I love those songs as well, but I will every now and again like a song that is quote unquote faux thug, the YG style so song. Like. So the song itself is uh, more of a dance track. It's not obviously you know gonna be a vocal heavy song you, you shouldn't expect one right um because they did say that it was gonna be different from you know songs past and Taeyang. it had a lot of piano a lot of kind of r&b style before mm-hmm. and so i was pleasantly surprised um especially as a dancer i really loved the dance video but <sighs> yeah so Unlike me, like Josh dances, he likes to dance. Like mm-hmm. he can watch a Korean MV and figure out half the choreo like in one watch. Right? No, that's not true. That's not true. Okay, three fourths. Three fourths. <laughs> <laughs> um, me, I just I'm I'm an idiot, right? So when I see uh, a video like Taeyang's, and I'm like, okay, well this reminds me of EXO's, doesn't mean it like they're the same. And he's copying it. Just reminds me of EXO's Growl's video. Um, I don't necessarily see the exact difficulty levels of it because I'm not a dancer. I don't know. Mm-mm. It all looks kind of like I'm good at math. And so when I see calculus, I'm like, this is easy. And it's much different than other things. But other people are like, it's fucking math. I don't understand any of it, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I'm kind of like that. Okay. For this video, the problem is, well, why we got so much flack is because a lot of things that we were saying, mm. um, a lot of people actually agreed on in the oh, dance video yeah, yeah. In the videos itself 
Um, but they were, I think I felt like they were a lot more harsh. They were saying, Taehyung's like exactly copying GD. He's doing mm-hmm. everything he's doing. I mean, we, all we said was, this sounds like a GD produced song. What else? Yeah. And, and it was written by and, and it was produced, produced by, by GD. Yes, produced by GD. What yeah. do you want us to say? So I feel like there are some similarities to EXO, and I, I feel like that kind of a fan war starting. Uh, just reading those comments, that those yeah. poisonous, poisonous comments. Yeah. Um, Everyone's but, like, "Oh, but he's better next EXO. He's better next EXO." And it's like, great. I mean, yeah. We're not even comparing them. We just said, "Oh, this." Is a dance video. Oh, kind of like how EXO did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, whoa, wait, wait. Big Bang had a one-shot video out. before that. And it's like, fucking one-shot videos have been around forever. Like, Big Bang don't own that. Just like EXO don't own that. Mm. But you can say it reminds you of something without having to fan battle them to death. But that's K-pop. Mm. That's K-pop fandom right there. That's true. Which is why I started the Honest Reaction videos. Because I wanted to be honest. Because I watched a lot of reaction videos beforehand. And I just don't understand how someone can watch 20... K-pop MVs and like every single one of them. That's not true. Like, that's fucking bullshit. Somewhere along the way. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I want to be honest. And of course, we accept that people don't like honesty. Or sorry, people don't like disagreeing with you. Of course not. So we get shit on. Mm. Whatever. Um, I should say that all of that has to do with a dance version. Dance version, yes. And, and I will say the more I watch the uh, dance version, he's pretty damn good. Dance version. But now I want to talk about the real music oh, video. Oh, the real. Because if if I shat on the dance video, Good thing we didn't I that. fucking <laughs> diarrhea and threw up on the real video because that video was fucking awful. Like, fuck, I don't, I don't know <laughs> other words. Like, I know Josh is trying to be nicer about it, but, like, the, the real version is fucking terrible. Like, why make such an involved, awesome dance if you're barely going to show it in the video? I will actually agree with you on that. Me and you actually don't agree very often, but I am saying this choreography is so good from start to finish. And in the real video, I saw maybe 5% of the choreography. And I was pretty bummed out because supposedly Taeyong learned his choreography in two days prior to shooting. Mm-hmm. And... He still does amazing in it, and I mm. want to see him dance. Like, if I don't, if I don't hear Taeyeon singing, I want to see him dance. I don't want to see like weird, guy, like what I like to call YG's like swag cam, basically. <laughs> yeah, like what, like yeah. what they did with the whole uh, CL solo. That was just that was just awesome. swag cam. Like you just put Full her in, in the weirdest things Outfits. that kind of look hip hoppy. And then just kind of send her out there, yeah. holding babies. Like I don't know. <laughs> like are they in Saudi Arabia? I don't even know. But yeah, and and you know I know someone's gonna be like, oh, but uh, this is not the dance version. So like, if it's not the dance version, it's okay if there's no dance in there. But this is not a dance version. It's like that's fucking bullshit. Because three fourths of MVs are usually a dance, or at least quick cuts of a dance. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they filled the MV with other things that had some substance, it wasn't just swag cam. It wasn't just Taeyong wearing weird outfits, oh, close up in his face. What was really bad is one of him and GD are sitting in that car with like a green screen behind them. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? That was so dumb. And I only watched the MV once because I will not watch that again. But I'm pretty sure GD's in drag for like... <laughs> A couple, of, you know what I'm talking about, I right? Do. Like I, do. I don't know if that's GD or if that's that? a girl that looks like GD or GD looks like. A... I think it was GD. Oh come on, you guys got fooled by one of a kind. You guys got fooled by one of a kind. Remember that that shot in one of a kind where he's in that dress? That's not one of a kind. That's yeah. get your crayon. Is it get your crayon? It's crayon. Crayon. Oh, but it's, you know what I'm talking crayon. about? It's yeah. Crayon. It's crayon, and he's wearing that like cocktail dress, and you're like, oh, dad, that girl got some. Oh god, yeah. damn, that's GD and Which Drag. I hope. Oh god, for, damn. For, for I hope that it was a girl, and then they cut it, and he turned around because it's not one full shot. Mm-hmm. So I will, you know, I, I will <laughs> on the record for my penis. <laughs> yes, sake. for for my penis, Mister Saint sake. John, which is not what I call my penis, but that'd be a cool name. No, um. Man. Sir Alistair McHammer. Just keep <laughs> go stop. I'm done with this. <laughs> All right. Um. Like I, I think it's a girl, and they and they did it because I was like, "Doh, there's no way, uh, G Dragon got that ass." But he might actually. He's G Dragon. He can do everything. He can do everything. He's magic G Dragon. 
go go check out the music video just to see what we're talking about if you haven't already. Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty much all we got to say about that. So. And just to sum up, in case people don't listen, Josh loves the shit out of this song and dance video. Mm-hmm. I'm. It's not bad. It's not bad. He. If you're not watching the YouTube version, he's dancing right now. So mm-hmm. you should you should check out the YouTube version. Um, so let's talk about the next song, which is a song by Jin, mm. um, and it's called Gone. Mm-hmm. Now, Jin, I don't know anything about Jin. I actually don't know very much about Jin either, but we came across this song, I think, um, because I'm subscribed to a few YouTube channels like that release things like this. Mm-hmm. So... We watched it. Um, it's off of Woolim Entertainment, right? Um, yeah, and she's going to be forming a girl group mm-hmm. with Baby Soul and UG, UGA. Yeah. Which I don't know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird that she's promoting solo, like, solo first. first, right? Yeah. Like, usually you'll have a group and it's successful and you have people who stand out like Yorin of Sistar. Mm. Then they do solo, but... But isn't that what YG said? Didn't they say they would, like, w- one at a time or in pairs send out the girls, and if they like them, then maybe they'll... Well, they are kind of doing that. I mean, Jenny Kim was featured on, on, on Black. GD's, yeah, Black. So, we don't know. It's a different strategy. We'll see how it pans out. But, yeah. I've, as you know, Woolum is under SM Entertainment now. Mm, um, yeah. So, they got um, XOS Human to be in the, to be in the music video. And it is effing sad. This this music video it makes me it makes me cry. It makes you cry. It makes me want to cry. It, like it's so it it's is heartbreaking. Definitely, a, this is like a good drama video mm-hmm. where it's not random ass cuts like Troublemaker, mm-hmm. right? It's like there's a story. There's no words to the story, but you know everything that happens, and it's sad as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't want to spoil any of it, right? Of course not. You don't want to. If you haven't seen it, which probably a lot of you haven't. Yeah, it's very go, indie. Go watch it. Go watch it. You'll appreciate it. I hope if you don't, if you think we're like sissies, then F you a little bit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's Jin with Gone. Now, what did you think about the song, um, aside from the video? I thought the style was good. I wasn't really wowed, to be honest. I wasn't like, oh man, this girl can sing. I don't... I didn't find myself saying that mm. in this video, but it it's for me it's not a real big song to kind of show your vocal chops. Mm. So it's kind of what it is, you know. Like yeah, for me it was just a ballad, songs. a ballad, yeah, ballad, ballad. ballad songs. Um, and this is why I like music videos because you're taking a song mm. and you are uh, making it better by making an MV that kind of uh, works with the song. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know the lyrics to, to the song Gone, mm-hmm. but the sound of it and the feeling emotion match this sad-ass MV, mm-hmm. and I like that. Like That's what MV should be here for, to enhance the experience, not detract from it like sometimes K-pop videos do. Mm-hmm. They suck. Yeah. M- mainly SM videos. S- SM Entertainment, are you, are you listening? Hey, they're SM not. now. They're SM now. not listening, which is really sh- in some warehouse with lights in the background like they always do. You know? Yeah, they always have the box sets and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think they're getting better about it. Like, for example, I think Exo's Growl, not to mention that shit again, but... It was still in a, it a was warehouse, still in box, son. It was still in a warehouse. But, but it was the best kind of box video they could possibly have made. Don't, don't. It's true. It I was not they, in a box. It was in an underground warehouse with strobe lights. I hope they can do something. <laughs> I mean, they got 12 guys, so... That's true. But you know what? Not to fuck, we're harping on this, but like with twelve guys, it's hard to like do a drama. I mean, because a drama version is very easy for a ballad singer or something because they don't even have to be in it, right? It's just like we can K-Will, do whatever we want. K-Will. <laughs> yeah, like K Will, so you can just do whatever you want. But when you got twelve guys and they're idols and everyone wants their sex faces, right? Like it's hard to do things that are not just boxes. But so they I think released, they did the best. But they released drama versions of songs before. That's true. Usually sometimes months after. <laughs> months after. Yes, months yeah. after. Was, I remember was watching Exo's Wolf. Wolf. Me and Kelvin did a V 
video response or video reaction to that, and that was weird. The drama version was weird. But that was like the bad drama version. That was like nonsensical scenes one after another drama version. Not, not like what was oh shit. There was a really good one about like five friends that are fighting and then they all ended up dying. That was they a really good. Yeah. Because when you were like five friends and they're fighting, it reminded me of what Big Bang's Haru Maru. It's it's kind of like that. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm blanking right now. Like I really like the song. It reminds. It's a very Big Bang sounding song, and that's why I like it. Like old school Big Bang, not new school Big Bang. I I, I need to figure out that video again. But um, it's such a good fucking song, and it's such a good fucking video. Is there a lot of violence in it? Yes. Is it LC Nine? No, not the Fight Club one. LC Nine is the Fight Club mm-hmm. one. Um, this is awful podcasting, but I'll, I'm going to look that up later to show Josh anyways. If you know what I'm talking about, tell us. Leave a comment. Tell us we're stupid. I mean, people like to do that. Just remind us. Yeah. I mean, no one listens to what I say anyway. So That's true. I mean, they Who, don't even What's your name care. again? I don't know. Like, I don't even know myself. Like, like fucking... just ignore me and my reactions, but whatever. It's like, I'm not even like butthurt or anything. Mm. so butter so butter so butter um all right well let's then move on then um mm-hmm. to the next video why don't you pack me on the and primary featuring gecko this was one of the infinity challenge songs we didn't want to talk about all of them honestly because not a lot of them wowed us i felt like they're pretty weak compared to for the record, what do you mean by Infinity Challenge songs? For people okay, that so that Infinity know. Challenge has is a show, is a variety show, and they have this song challenge mm. every season where they invite big name stars to collaborate with obviously the cast members and produce a song and make a song. And usually these songs, when they come out, they are all kills. They kill everything. Mm. When you're when you're an artist and you want to put out a song, don't put out a song, Infinity Challenge song challenge time. Mm. It will you will just get eaten alive. But this this song obviously is really great. It's number one on a lot of things, but there is a lot of a lot of flack. Yeah. For, this for the song. record, this song of, is called "I Got C." Agashi. Yeah. Agashi. Which I don't know why they. Does that mean something in Korean? So I I thought Agashi is like a, a weird way of saying Ajashi. That's what I thought. Which like, is like old, which is like a middle aged man, because Park Min is like a middle aged man. I yeah, think that's the joke. But in English, they decided to call it I got, got C, C, which makes Agashi. absolutely no sense. Um, but uh, anyway, so aside from there's some controversy, which we'll talk about in a second. Aside from that, we picked this one because even before that, this is I think the best one. Oh, easily the best one. Um, easily. Yeah, by far. Like the other that G Dragon's in some and Boa's in some and like uh, all these other people are in some, but uh everyone kind of attributes primary. Mm-hmm. Um actually Gecko does a really good job, I think, of uh, of of carrying the song a little bit. He's he's the rap sidekick. You know how sometimes in rap shows you'll have the main guy and then a hyper. Yeah, he's like the hype man. Yeah, he's the hype man, yeah. Um, he did a really good job of that. But primary is the dude that's running this song. Mm-hmm. Produced it and everything, and you can tell it's a primary song just by the way it sounds. Because it's fucking good. <laughs> that's yeah, I mean, I love you primary. Know. I love, love, love primary. As I've probably mentioned before, I really like his style, and especially when he collaborates with like Dynamic Deal or Zion T, mm. it is gold ninety percent of the time. Yeah, primary also wrote the Mr. Lee song uh-huh, last that we week, talked about last week, which was Mr. also Lee, good. Usani, that is an effing good song. Yeah. Um, and you know what, I, there's some Korean jokes, I think, in the middle of the song that I don't understand, so I don't know Korean, but, like, it's just so catchy, like, Park Byung Soo does, does a good job, does a good job singing. Yes. Uh, uh, Gecko does an awesome job hyping up, mm-hmm. and it sounds awesome. Um, the sad thing, though, right? Sad is thing is that Primary, uh, is, is being accused of plagiarizing, uh, from Carl Emerald, if, we have any UK listeners out there, you should know who Carl Emerald is. She had like a number one album maybe within the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, and her album is amazing, amazingly good. And it's probably why I like Primary so much because they really, really, really do sound 
similar or almost exactly alike, except for I want to say primary adds a little bit more of a hip hop feel, maybe mm. more drum kit feel to it. But yeah, so there's a video out there comparing I Got C yeah. to I think the song's what Liquid Lunch. Yeah, there's I mean there, well, there are, are other songs. There are plenty of other songs. Like Mr. Lee is also uh, a part of that list that has. Pretty much he got hammered. Primary got hammered. got hammered. He was like, yo, this song, this song, this song, this song sound like this song, this song, this song. Yeah. This song. Amoeba Culture is in trouble because they said it's not plagiarism. Um, they don't want to talk about it anymore. It's just because it's upbeat swing and you'll have similar melodies upbeat swing. But David Schurz, who is uh, Carl Emerald's producer, blatantly said, yeah, Primary copied my stuff as a template, definitely. Mm -hmm. But and they do sound similar. They do sound very like, similar. Frighteningly similar. Uh, some of the other songs, I think, maybe a little nebulous. But I got C definitely sounds like I think the Liquid Lunch song, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which sucks because really I sucks. really like this song. But I'm not so hoity-toity. I'm like I don't fucking like people copy off of people all the time yeah. in music. Yeah. Like I, it sucks. Um, I really hope he didn't do it. But it's a sample. Still a good song, you know. Um, yeah. At least she should give credit where credit's due if you're gonna yeah. take something. I I wasn't so much concerned about him sampling the song or him using it as a template. I'm just not, just not happy that Viva Culture blatantly said no. They sound nothing alike. Come, right when they come when on. they you do, have, you have ears. It's <laughs> you, have, almost, you have ears, you bro. You have ears that. Work. You got holes in the side of your head that receive vibrations. No, we it got away from <laughs> it got away from us. You know, like <laughs> shit goes in the ear and it goes in your brain. You should fucking know. Come on, now these are very similar. A lot of primary songs sound like David Shearer's songs. Yeah, and if you are gonna use template, just give credit where credit is due. That's all yeah. I'm asking. I personally like the primary songs better, the versions, um, because obviously I like more hip-hop. Yeah, me, even me too. Right? And just, just man up, Amoeba Culture. Yeah, my concern is primary is like up and coming. He's been doing a lot more, a lot more, a lot more, a lot more. And this is kind of one of those things like, oh, well, momentum is kind of now lost. Mm. And he's, he's good. And it it would suck if he didn't make some songs for a while because of this. I really hope not. I I love all his albums that he puts out, his collab albums like Premiere and the Messengers. Mm. I love that stuff. Please just stop. Just stop. Yeah, it could have been all avoided. I think if yeah, he's like, just, yo, like, just man up. I Let's. Know. I know. There's no way that you. You could have came up with this yourself and been, oh, this is just so shocking. They're similar. Yeah. No, they sound the same. If you don't believe us, go listen to it for yourself. Yeah. And even, even if you don't give a shit, listen to it. It's a good song. I got to see. Yeah. Park Myung Soo in primary. It's like, the best song in, in this Infinity Challenge song festival. So, Which, by the way, didn't know they did this every year. Mm. Didn't know. Because I always wanted to watch in, in, Infinity Challenge. Mm. Always. But nobody subs that shit. Like, ah. I love Running Man. Because someone subs that shit all the time. Do you know why? Because Running Man is the younger people's Infinity Challenge. True. And the younger people know that internet. And you're yeah. topping top little sandwiches. I can't get a tack -tack. Uh, <laughs> but I've seen like a couple episodes of Infinity Challenge and it's fucking hilarious. It's, it's really good. Um, on a side note, very sad that Running Man is losing its steam. I haven't seen it in a while, but the ratings keep going down and down and down and down. And they keep on bringing A-list fucking EXOs, Susie back, like A-list people, and they're still not doing really well. So Do sad. you know why? It's because this the show is based about based upon based about based upon games. Yeah, and, and they get stale. And you just can't run the same game more than so many times. It's just True. a natural course that you're just gonna run out of ideas. It's just that hard to make games with a certain set cast with certain. Yeah, you know, style. You're gonna have what six or seven cast members interact with idols and just just the same. Yeah, it. you can't really diversify that. And also, because um, uh, you know, I don't know if this is true, but in general, I think Korea or other countries lag a little bit behind trends like from America. So, like last ten years was America's big switch to reality TV, 
Mm. And that's happening in Korea now because the biggest shows now are reality TV shows like Real Men and like What's My Daddy or some something about daughters. Oh, well, what do you got? Yeah. Dad, where are you going? Yeah, Dad, where are you going? Where it's about real people and real things, and and which is great. Like it's, I think I've only seen a little bit of it. It's way, it's not like Kardashians or Real World or yeah, Laguna it's, Beach it's, or any of that shit. But it's reality variety. TV. Yeah, the re- reality variety. I mean, if you if you go back a few years, you will have more things like Star King and Star Golden Bell. Those things mm, being mm, popular. Yeah, and those aren't what's making the money these days no. it's like real man right stuff like that so that's a random sign up but sorry i mean no no i i brought it up like sorry i think that's important <laughs> because one of the reasons i started watching running man was because i used to listen to k-pop and they used to be like oh what's this person doing what's this person doing and running man if you were if you do not watch running man just fucking find it running man is one of the funniest shows in the world i love it not lately though I have not seen it in a long time because I actually save it. It's like one of those things I save on my hard drive on for a, rainy like a, day. a for sad, rainy day. sad day. Yeah, for a rainy So day. when I first came to Korea, I didn't have internet for a month. I watched a lot of Running Man. So did I. And I was like, I love this show. But I've heard it's gotten really, yeah. really, really, really sad. Well, then it just goes to show you that you can pack as much star power you want into a show and it will fail. Just like, I don't know if you guys know, but Barefoot Friends got canceled. And that had like what boa in it that had like unyuk from super junior in it they yeah if the concept's some... not good don't matter yeah don't matter just, what you throw at it they'd rather see people who aren't as famous with a little bit more like real engaging, men, right? yeah. engaging. Yeah. it's like i i, it's, I relate right Rel- i can relate yeah. yeah um all right well now that we talked about that let's go transition into the news but before the news i want to thank everybody who continues to support us um, seriously, we had I hadn't done the podcast for three months, and it really, really, really makes me happy that people are still downloading the podcast. People are still watching us on YouTube. Mm. People are doing a shit on YouTube, but it's fine. <laughs> people are still shitting watching. on top of our heads on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so we just want to remind you that <laughs> if you want to talk to us, actually, nowadays the best way is to follow us on Facebook. I'm on Facebook a lot in mm. Korea. Um, so you can find us at This Week in K-Pop. You can also find us on Twitter, which is also at This Week in K-Pop. I'm telling you, if you mention, I check it every day. But if you if you talk to me, I'll try. I'll talk back. Joshua, I can give him login yeah. if I'm, I trust him. You can't trust me. Not yet. I'm still brand new. you brand still new. brand Shut new. Shut the fuck up. Um, you, man. And also, if you, the best, best place to see all our stuff, reaction videos, video versions of the podcast – Subscribe to us on YouTube, and I want to thank everybody because last week we were at 164 subscribers, mm-hmm. and this week we now have 195. Super surprising! We're so close to 200, and <laughs> I'm this is the biggest gap I've ever experienced, or biggest jump I've ever experienced from week to week, and oh. I think that's due to the hush reaction that mm-hmm. we did, and of course the uh, Taeyang dance version one. and maybe you got a new co-host or something he's maybe got too. a new co-host he's pretty good too i heard that guy's not bad i heard kelvin some bald dick <laughs> bald dick bald dick like all the bald dick actually, um, i'm really surprised that we actually have positive subscribers after all that poo poo i'm used to it. i'm used to it. i told him not to worry about it i was like don't respond to comments and i just fucking did it because i was angry they don't listen to me i was angry as some motherfuckers um, but anyways, let's talk about the news. Thank you, news. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. everybody. We love you guys. Uh, Come up, And you're the best. Um, so let's talk about the news. The first thing we want to talk about is the Gaon chart, which ranks all the songs every month, released their rankings for October of mm-hmm. 2013. We mm-hmm. always talk about this. We call it Get Your Gaon. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> well, we're gonna get, get, we're gonna get our whoop, get whoop, our gay on. Get your gay on. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and uh, first is the national digital singles ranking. Singles, just singles, just as single ladies. And number one, not surprising, but number one is IU with red shoes, mm. which we talked about last week. It was a meh for me. I, I it sounded like an IU song, but was not a good one. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't especially. Yeah, away by it. But I hear it everywhere. Yeah, um, it's not, so it's that not makes bad. sense. Number two is Busker Busker with their song First Love. Chot-sarang. 
Just and love. That's a good song. Busco Buster is really good. Number three, K Will, You Don't Know Love. Which is surprising that this is up so high because it got released relatively towards, late. Yeah, towards the end of October. Yeah. So we'll probably see this again in November's digital sales ranking. It's probably going to be top five again. All November is going to be big, right? I mean, oh, yeah. happen, right? that's true. Number four is Lim Ch- Chang Jun. Lim Chang Jun. A guy like me. Never, I don't know who that is. Um, he's Probably a drama? No. No. No, he plays like guitar, and, you know. Nope. Sorry. Number five is Jung Jong Yoon with 10 minutes before breaking up. Jung Jun Young. What did I say? Jung 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 Young. Jung Jung Young. Jung Jung Young. Okay. Ten minutes before breaking up. This is the guy that's on We Got Married. Uh, he's, oh yeah. He's kind of got this weird dark eyes. Kind of. I've like seen that. this one. It's not bad. It's not bad. Number six is Block B. Very uh, good. Very very good. Which I'm actually surprised it's so low because all my kids fucking love this song. No kids. All my they don't got no money. Yeah. That's well. This is. Uh, this is oops, digital. Uh, is this who, how many people downloaded it, or is this how many people just streamed it and like? Gaon count. I don't even know. Honestly, I, know. I thought Melon know. was the streaming one. Gaon is the. <laughs> Number seven. We I don't you, do our research. <laughs> are you featuring Gaon? Everybody has a secret. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've heard that. Number six is Shiny. Yeah. Everybody. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really surprised that it's at eight. To be fair, it's fucking shiny. Um, and that song was won a lot of awards too. Yeah. Number nine, Busker Busker, too much regret. And number ten, Tiara with Tiara, motherfucker, Tiara. Tiara, number nine. Number nine. Um. So. Number nine. This kind of always happens. It's like half of them are songs that are like more, maybe more ballads and more drama OST kind of things, or or maybe for the older generation. I don't know. Um, but you know, it's always nice to know. Good job, Ayu. Good job, Buska Buska. Got two on there. That's yeah, true. Um, then we talk about the physical albums. We'll go through really fast. Physical albums, almost always dominated by men. But surprisingly... From no- SM. Yeah, number one, Shiny. No surprise there. Of course. Number two, Jejun. WWW. Jejun is, is killing it. Which, by the way, I showed Jejun's picture to a lot of my high school students, or my middle school students. They're like, oh, too old. Too old. And I'm not like, even that old, though. You, I'm like, he's not old. And also, like, you don't think he's good looking? And they're like, Dude oh, too looking. old, too old. And it's like, Dude he's good looking. He's the girly looking one, right? That doesn't help in K pop, man. <laughs> really good look- yeah, Really girly looking one. Maybe? I think he is. I, I think I Anyways, number three is IU, Modern Times. Decent. I'm mm-hmm. um, still about a third of what Shiny uh, made at number one, but mm-hmm. not bad. Number four and five, EXO. So strange that they are still racking up the physical album sales. Dude, they got they got those girls, man. Are the, are the exotics buying like six copies of each? Like probably. What the hell? Don't you buy like the digital the album, the remix album, the okay, okay, quadriceptic okay. convolution okay. album? It, I will listen to the title track. If the title track is good enough, I'll listen to the album. Sure. If I like the album, I'll buy it. And if I really like the album then I will physically purchase the album. If there's a compilation album... Maybe. Maybe. There's a... If it's Girls' Generation. Reason release. I don't know. It's SNSD. It's an issue day. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. anyways, the Gay On chart, always nice to get our Gay On. Um, I don't... Oh, go. S- speaking of Sonya Shide. Speaking, speaking of Sonya Shide. Shide. Go ahead. They had what a, happened to your girls, bro? <laughs> they had a, a concert in Hong Kong, uh, part of the world tour. And apparently Jessica got, she got bullied a little bit or pushed, she got like pushed, pushed or something. Uh, accidentally. In the Hong Kong airport. Uh, a lot of rumors, obviously. People say security guard. Um, maybe she just fell down. I mean, you never know because these K-pop stars, all K-pop stars, famous or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. You get worked. <laughs> you get worked and you get worked and you get worked. And the slightest thing will just... Just knock you over. Well, what weirds me out, and this is why I did actually realize I want to talk about this, it's that I don't see K-pop artists walking around with giant fucking security guards. Like, whenever I see a video of them in airport, or whenever I see them, like... Just their managers. Like, it's just a manager, maybe one 
semi tiny looking Asian guy, but it's like I would have the girl generation is the biggest thing in Korea right now, right? Like they can't afford to buy five gigantic dudes, like gigantic as black dudes. See, like that's why? The, that's the thing, though. Like Korean fans, and I want to say they're fucking crazy. They're fucking crazy, but they Korean and Japanese fans they still respect like. I don't know. I remember seeing like videos of like people rushing EXO and like X fucking okay, with some, them. And, some EXO like, fans are kind of crazy. You can't base. True. All, all the fandoms based off some fans from, you know. Like I guess I I, I should say yes. They they are more respectful, hmm. but that doesn't mean they at any moment that any moment if one person crosses the barrier, you know a thousand people are going to cross that barrier, mm -hmm. whatever the barrier is. And so like I just don't understand why they would risk their prized possessions. Just get them a bodyguard. No, what's weird to me is that what you is? know you know in the states. The, the the pop stars in the states all have private jets, all have designated routes where they're gonna take. They have like convoys to get them away they from. Will, yeah, if you want to see your, if you want to see your pop stars, you the only place you're gonna see them is leaving a building, jumping into a car for that split second, right? right. Like, or or luckily on the street or something, it's like getting they getting brunch or something, right? But. There's a reason why people can document airport fashion. There's a reason why there's a whole bunch of fan cam stars at airports because no K-pop company is going to spend that money to buy them a private jet. Right. They're going to fly first class, yes, but they're going to walk to the airport like normal people. Normal people. And honestly, it doesn't matter how many security guards you have. If you have more bodies swarming to one place it won't matter it won't matter well that's true this reminds me of i don't know if you guys listening watch eat your kimchi but they had just talked about why the one dude from you kiss quit mm, dango. yeah and it's like he was talking about how like the company don't fucking treat the artist with any form of respect like which granted they don't have to per se but like if they're they are effectively bankrolling these people, and they're taking all their slave wages, right? You would think they would. You would think they would try and protect their assets at least, but they don't even do that. Mm. Like it's so weird to me that they, like, I get why they're like, oh, we want them to walk around the airport, get the fashion shit, mm. like, get all oh, their kind of like normal people. But it's also like you want to protect your assets, and at any moment in time, Jessica could have. Been really hurt. She could have been. Yeah, and that would have been really bad. Supposedly, some people said that she hit her head or on a railing or something like something crazy like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, and that like, could have been really dangerous. Apparently, she just got a bruise, which is fine. Like that's not news in itself, but like the behind it is mm -hmm. kind of scary. It's like even SNSD cannot get a better protection scheme. What's more scary is that nine times out of ten, they will be forced to perform right even if they're like sick or man yeah like man. that one most recently that one girl from tiara her 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 calf or, or her leg or something and she had to perform to be fair That's you don't know crazy. you don't know if they made her maybe she was like i don't want to let my girls down and fuck up the routine and i'm gonna do it you don't know that to that's probably true but let's be honest those k-pop stars even if they say that there's some pressure from the companies to perform right which is is a bigger issue yeah. with 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 how K-pop treats their artists, which we can talk about forever. We but, can, but um, we're not going to talk about that now. Yeah. Let's There's, talk about some other recent thing. Also, fun. This is a funny side note as a solo one. There was apparently a Hong Kong article about oh, Taeyeon yeah. and Yuna being drunk in an alley or something. So it's just like it's this one picture Python. of Asian girls. And okay, if you guys know where what. Well, where Hong Kong is, or like, are familiar with Hong Kong, there's a, a place called LKF, and that's where everyone goes to drink. Uh, where everyone know. goes to night nightclubs. I have some friends in Hong Kong. Pearl, what's up? I have no friends. Um, but yeah, they don't. You don't. Even, they just said, "Oh, it kind of looks like them," and that was it. Well, that was pretty funny. But I think what's funny is like, who the fuck cares? They're old enough to drink. They're Korean, like. Korean people like to drink. Korean people like, like to get drink. fucking shit faced, and it's normal. And then they go to work the next day. Like, like I get that they're supposed to be idols, but like, who cares if they drink? 
Who cares? People do. People do. Yeah. Especially the, as stressed as they are, probably. Um, but also, seriously, two random Asian girls, like, you're going to be like, yo! It's a mistake. Yeah, but that's um, that's the life of a celebrity anywhere. True. So, speaking of all that negative press... Um, a lot of shit happened. A lot week. of shit happened. Yeah. As you guys know, um, I'm sure you guys know, uh, we'll start, I guess, from... They may not know. Start with this gambling stuff. Yeah, Just start, mention we'll start, real quick. We'll start, we'll start, we'll build our way up. So a whole bunch of, of people are being involved in this illegal online sports gambling thing. And it's not the first time. This is I've, I've heard about this a few times at least. Um, but some big names you might know are Tony Ahn, who was obviously from the boy group HOT back in the day. Um, Andy from Shinwa, if you guys know Shinwa. And also Boom, the MC. They all... all a part of this gambling prosecution business. And it is just surprising, but at the same time, not surprising, you know? Yeah. But gambling is very illegal here, right? Even though I feel like it does happen a lot. Illegally, right? Yeah. Um, but still, it's like the, the b- bomb. Is it bomb or boom. boom? Boom. Boom. Like, he had to leave all his television shows. Yeah. You know, like, regardless of what happens, it's like, yo, and then they got to... I guess it's technically their fault, right, for doing illegal sports betting. But yeah, he didn't. He he hasn't even been found guilty, and he's already planning to leave all his shows. all his shows, which is crazy. But yo, you guilty what, until you're proven innocent. Uh, that's that's how it works. Mm-hmm, even yeah. in America, that's how it works. Especially with celebrities. Yeah. Sorry, but but that's when you're like, if you're a celebrity, you are supposed to. Be living at a higher level, but how unfair that is. You're a human, but you're a human under constant scrutiny. But so that's one thing, right? Some controversy, some shit. What else? What was the next level? The next level was Unyuk, as you guys know, has a Twitter. Or maybe you don't know. Unyuk from Super Junior has a Twitter. I didn't know where he was from. And he gets his Twitter hacked. All the time. I want to say this is the third or fourth time he's gotten it hacked. His password is fucking super junior. <laughs> it's like super junior <laughs> Unyuk, one, two, three. There's something stupid like that. But and he doesn't even bother to change his password. And he just yeah, has a like, number. Like, super, like, junior one. Super, super junior one. Super junior two. Super junior three. Super junior four. Like now we're at like super junior one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight now. Yeah. But all jokes aside. This time, someone posted nude pictures of a participant from Superstar K4. Mm. And that was a, a big, a pretty big deal. Well, that's a step up, right? Like, yeah. Just hacking is one thing, but also to be like, hey, there's pictures of a naked fucking girl. That's and she okay. is a B-list celebrity. She's a participant of, you know, basically Korean American Idol. Yeah. And it's just... I like the other comments are all just like, again. Yeah. Uh, again. Basically, everyone is just saying what I'm saying. Really, and yet again, like, please in, involve some special characters, capital <laughs> letters. Stop logging in on everybody's please, phone and please, fucking computer. Please, and yet, please. Oh, God. Put a, put a special character in there, right? I know. Um, but seriously, though, like, uh, but what I think I'm like, okay, what was this dude's plan? Like, to hack his thing and then. What, be like, hey, I'm sleeping with this girl. I, oh, I accidentally sent it to a million fucking Twitter followers. Like, no one was going to believe that Inyuk actually did this, right? Well, so, like, what's the point? The the message was like, oh, hot. The girl, the girl from Superstar K4, I won't name her name, but obviously you'll find out by herself. But it's the girl from Superstar K4, the guy pretended to be her. So... If anything, I don't feel bad for Unya because he gets his Twitter hacked all the time. It still sucks. Yeah. But this girl has... Bad has for the girl. Her, yeah, has her, has her business. But all, all it is nude photos of her, right? So, like, mm. it had to have been someone who got these nude photos from yeah. her, right? That Like, that's actually way shadier than just, oh, I just put up random naked girls or, oh, I just said I had sex with her. It was like, yo, this came with... Well, they, they didn't say if it's really her nude but mm. nobody's saying it's not her yep um so it's like how did he get these photos to begin with like this is a little crazy premeditated right here but i mean 
Maybe he was just like, where can I put this online? I know. I'm just, I'm just, just logging <laughs> so into Unix. Log. I'm just going to log into Unix Twitter. But, um, I mean, speaking about nude pictures online, you know we were going to talk about this. If you know already, um, then you know what we're going to talk about. If you don't know, what we're talking about is obviously the Ailey um, nude photos that were released and just a whole bunch of drama that was in the aftermath of that. It's just so... I just I have a lot to say about this, but you know, Stephen, right. Stephen, I'll let you start off. We'll just get. I'll just summarize it before we talk about what we think. But so um, the the general the first story was yes. just like all K-pop ran this thing saying that yo we got it wasn't like yo we got new photos, but it was like new new photos has been released and people instantly attributed it to Ailey's ex boyfriend who works at all K-pop. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't matter. It's fucking naked pictures of Ailey. Which is, which, which, that, okay, if, if this was America, she would come back stronger than ever. It is that's, that's how America works, right? This is Kardashian. fucking, yeah, Paris, Paris Hilton, 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 Kim Kardashian, whoever the fuck, right? I'm but gonna, gonna this is Korea, and... This is super conservative Korea. Yeah, and so it's like, Ailey is, like, I really like Ailey. She's one of the only girls that sings like a fucking beast. I love Ailey so much. Like, She's so good. Her songs are so good. Her vocals are so great. Just so great. And it's like, okay. So there's naked photos. Probably, maybe, potentially pre-debut, right? They have to be pre-debut because the people were saying that the room that she's in looks like... Like at home. Yeah, uh, so Ailey, if you didn't know, before she became a big, big shot K-pop star, she had a YouTube channel, which she sang on, and that's how she kind of got noticed. And she's from America, of course. She's from America, I think from Colorado, um, and she she got discovered, I think, 2010, something like mm. that, and then went to go train in Korea 2010. So I'm pretty sure these are pre-debut, almost 100% sure. Which means they're also very young pictures. Yeah. Potentially um, child porn. Yeah, it could potentially be child pornography. You don't know that. Yeah. But, I mean, first things first, this just sucks shit for Ailey. Like, I feel just not, not only horrible for her, but just, you know, it is, this is not something you want to see, not only to, you know, to family anyone. members, family yeah. members, not to, not just family members or people you care about, but just anyone. You don't want you don't want to see this being done to any human being. This is just so humiliating. But now I'll be devil's advocate here and say you don't want naked pictures show up on the internet. Don't fucking take no goddamn naked pictures. All right, like that's fucking rule number one. Okay. Yeah. Um, Very true. Now I feel bad for her because yes, technically. It, she, she didn't want them to be released, right? Yeah. We don't know the backstory of that. Yeah. And I feel awful for her because this yeah. could potentially ruin a, a really amazing career. A really amazing um, artist. But I I just don't want people to think that we don't know that. Like, Yeah. Like, like, okay. Girls, if there are any girls listening to this, don't Please don't take naked send pictures. anyone naked pictures. Nobody. Nobody naked pictures. No. Nobody, nobody but you. Nobody, period. <laughs> Not even you. Not even your boyfriend. That's true. That's true. If, if I date one of you viewers in the future and I ask you for naked pictures, don't send them to me. Don't send them. No more. matter how much I beg. Snapchat that shit because they disappear. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Um, but seriously, so that, that aside, aside. Yeah, just um, aside. I do really feel that because I really like Ailey and... Well, I didn't talk to you about this because I wanted to save it, but mm. I talked to my co-teacher about yeah. this at lunch. Yeah. And I was talking about – she actually brought it up. She's like, oh, hey, did you hear about Ailey? That, that bitch got fucking her titties off. <laughs> You're <Right>? American. You <laughs> must have heard about yeah. nudity. And she, and she was like – I was asking her. I was like, okay, so I know in America, like, this is not a big thing. Like, if anything, I'll make her more popular. I was like, so what's it like in Korea? And she's like, actually, if this was 10 years ago, she'd probably be done. But she says um, everybody she's talked to and the general Korean sentiment is that it's not her fault. It is all her ex-boyfriend's fault or whoever released it. It is. Dang. 
Yeah. Which yeah. which is weird to me because it's like I was expecting full bl- fledged. Yo, don't take naked pictures if you don't want to show up, right? Yeah. But they were like, actually, yeah, she'll step down, and yeah, a lot of people are are probably not going to like her as much anymore. There's um, always going to be people like that, right? Just. And she did kind of have a, a semi in it, like innocent-y kind of look. Yeah. Um. So this is definitely going to ruin that a little bit. But you know what? After a couple of years, most Korean stars go sexy anyways. So. If she takes a year or two break, she comes back sexy, people are going to be like, makes sense. And Ailey is is beautiful. She is a beautiful woman. But, I mean, let's be honest here. Still, the story was, apparently she had taken these pictures hoping to become an underwear model or something like that. That's what her agency released. Yeah, her uh, her agency and All K-Pop said different things. So you can start with what her agency said. Yeah, so her agency said, okay, yeah, these are you know, nude pictures that she sent um, to an underwear, you know, agency, underwear model agency, and she didn't hear back from them, and she contacted the police, and she was one of the many girls who were caught up in some fraud, and she had sent these to an ex-boyfriend, and her ex-boyfriend was trying to get money off of them, and that's basically what had happened, but... Which, which to me, doesn't... Because number one, she she's not that old now, right? So for this to happen it's before like pre debut, there's a chance it could be really young pictures, right? Like, I mean, okay. it just sounds like a fucking porn. Like, who does like send me naked pictures and maybe you'll be a model? Like, I don't. Does that happen in real life? Maybe it does happen in real life. But that just sounds like a there flimsy porn. People. There are sleazy people out there. They are sleazy people. And there's dumb people too, right? But like, I just don't. It just sounds like a flimsy porn setup to me. Mm. Like fucking backroom casting couch. Which if you know that reference, you watch porn. <laughs> if you don't know that reference, congrats to you. Your um, mind is clean and pure. And pure. Unlike, unlike us. Sorry. Um, but then, of course, all K-pop or the parent company of all K-pop mm-hmm. uh, re- respond and they're like, no, actually, like, uh, whoever was selling the pictures... We don't think it's the ex-boyfriend because he works for us. Yeah. But we don't think it's him. But somebody contacted us living in Canada mm-hmm. saying we have pictures. They saw proof of the pictures and he wanted them to pay him $3,500 for them. Something like which that. Which is shockingly low actually. Like yeah. in America I thought it would be like $100,000 for someone who's decently popular. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course uh, all K-pop was like, no, we're not going to do this. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're denying you. And then they said and they showed email quote unquote evidence that – Oh, actually, we told Ailey's agency, yo, this dude has naked pictures. We've seen them. We're even going to give you a copy of one of them. Like, we think this is going to be a problem. And then they said that Ailey's agency was like, no, nah, we think you're fucking bullshit. We yeah. don't care. Supposedly, these pictures have been on the internet since, like, July or something. Yeah. That's the rumor. And so, you know, all K-pop was like, yo, like, we try to warn you, like, if it's they're released, we have to do our job as news agencies mm-hmm. and, and news talk agencies. about it, which I, I don't know where you fall in that, but, like, I 100% agree. If that's the true story, it is their job, quote unquote, um, because, like, there's nobody in this world. I, 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 should, I should rephrase. Nobody logical thinks news agencies quote unquote, are out there to promote good. That's not how news works. News works because when bad things happen, people click on your shit. Yes. Right? Yes. So I don't, I know there's some people that are like, oh, all came up, shouldn't have run this because it's going to ruin lives. But like, that's what these sites run on. They run on bad things. Yeah. Um, Because, I would, like I said, I was talking to my co-teacher, and I was like, yo, in America, like, paparazzi are all over the place. They would have eaten that shit They would have eaten that shit. A, like, they would have fucking bought that in a second. Mm-hmm. And she was telling me how Korean paparazzi is actually, until recently, until apparently Dispatch started, like, Korean paparazzi are way in the back. Like, they are super respectful. Like, they are not taking crazy pictures of you. Um, it wasn't until, that's why actually she said there's been so many dating com- confirmations recently, mm-hmm. is because... 
more and more news outlets are starting to use the more American paparazzi Style idea. Paparazzi. That, that makes um, me sad. Yeah. That makes me really which sad. Which is sad. Yeah. But I don't know. I just hope she can get over this. I hope it's not a career killer. I really um, hope it's not a career killer. She's She seems like a, a wonderful girl who did something stupid. Okay, let's... <laughs> This is just plain a stupid act, but she's not necessarily stupid or anything. It's not what we're saying. We're just saying that we hope that this mistake, which it was a mistake, doesn't come back and just smashes all that she's been working hard for. Right. Yeah. Like, just because, yeah, she shouldn't have done it doesn't excuse everything else for happening, right? It doesn't excuse her douchebag ex-boyfriend, if it was the ex-boyfriend, from, from doing this. It doesn't excuse... Whoever, I mean, if it wasn't ex-boyfriend for doing that, so um, they're definitely the bigger assholes. Whoever's releasing yeah. those pictures, um, but seriously, life lesson: if you haven't figured that out by now, see um, the whole the whole K all K-pop kind of scandal that happened. Like the human inside of me wants to blame all. K Come on, man! Like you're close with if Ailey supposedly like yeah. Why you gotta do this to her and all that? But the uh, when my brain thinks about it, it just comes down to money. Money, right? Yeah. Like, people want to make money. I bet a million bucks they got at least 10 times the amount of traffic they normally would have. Like, their servers went down, right? Their servers went down. It was so, it was such a big deal. Yeah. yeah so. And all the comments are like, fucking old K pop, plus a piece of shit. Like, they should have run this. And me personally, it's like they did their job. It's not a noble job. Like they're not the fucking newsroom on HBO. Like they're not. They're not like CNN. They report K-pop celebrity gossip. Yeah. Even CNN runs fucking gossip shit now. Like there's no news agency in the world anymore that's like we're doing it for the morals. Like no. You ain't Anderson Cooper. Let's be real. You ain't Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Anderson Cooper will forever be the guy that hosted the mole to me. I don't know if you watched that show when you were a kid. I did. But like I didn't even know he was a news guy. I was like, he's who the fuck? Pretty, why is the host of the mole fucking talking he's about this a shit? Badass news guy too. <laughs> yeah, I heard he's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, that so uh, all K-pop got slammed because they were like, oh, new, oh, oh, reporting on the news like, oh, now you're reporting on naked pictures on on New York's Twitter. Oh, now you're reporting on people that are being charged in this gambling thing. It's like you're you're just trying to bring down Korean slabs. And it's like well, these things no. are happening. These yeah. things are happening. Like it's kind of like a. A situation where okay if all k-pop doesn't report on it someone else is going to report on it and they're going to make money off of it oh. and so all k-pop reports on it yeah that's just that is the sad the world, world we in. live in yeah. where <clears throat> your privacy is not safe no nudies girls no nudies or no nudies okay <laughs> don't show your fucking face you've been spending Way too much time with girls who take nudies, man. Yeah, you remember the conversation? I don't know if you were there, but I had this like 20 minute conversation about new pictures with some other English teachers here. And what? all the girls were like, all the girls were like, rule number one when giving naked pictures to your friends, I'm not friends, your boyfriends, yeah, don't show <laughs> your face. I remember that. I remember that. It was a certain person yes. that we both know yes. about that we might go to a party to. Yes. This week. There were two girls. Yes. One of them being that person. And they... Like, that's actually a really good idea. Like, okay, girls are fucking crazy. Send naked pictures if you want to send naked pictures. Just don't show your face. And then this won't get back. And don't... Don't show any birthmarks. Don't show anything <laughs> that, that they can instantly pinpoint as you. All right? But seriously, if you have naked pictures, send it to me. All right. Let's talk about the lovely, next lovely, three lovely. songs. <laughs> um... The fourth song from this week we want to talk about is by a person named Yu Song Un. Yeah, Yu Song Un. Healing is the name of the song. This was actually what I was going to choose for song of the week, but I haven't heard it enough. I have, haven't heard it enough. I've only heard it earlier today, actually, mm. um, in the morning, maybe a little bit last night. But this song is so good. It is so good. Please go listen to it. You sung un. Healing. You sung un. You sung un. It's a little hard to spell. Korean romanization is, is pretty 
It's it's terrible bad. Sometimes. And you need to learn how to write Korean, man. I can't read. Actually, now I I, 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 I can read Hangul. Like I have I can pronounce it better if I see it in Hangul. Like romanization really screws you screws you. It up. really sucks. Um, so people who who are learning Korean, try to skip romanization if you can. But this song is amazing. It has kind of like that old school Asian harp. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there, it's I can't but, remember uh, what it's called, but that it has that in it, and it had and it plays like a li- like the three note um, kind of diddle that Stand By Me has. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, I also only heard anyway. this once today um, at work, and I didn't pay attention. Dun, 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 dun. Or uh, Marvin Gaye's what? Bam, bam, bam. That song? Is that the song you're talking about? Uh, this, this, these three notes are very, very popular in a lot of different songs. But you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when you hear it. Go listen to it if you haven't heard it. It is amazing. Yeah, you heard a little bit of it because I, if you're listening to the audio version, because I edit that shit in. If you're watching YouTube version, like it's like a ballad, but it's a ballad. I used to say this with Kelvin a lot, but it's a ballad with a beat. Like it starts a little bit more ballady, like more instrumentally, and then uh, as it goes on, I actually don't know if that's just a different version of the song because it kind of it's like a long MV, hmm. um, but like it, the the dude starts hitting the beat bot, the beat thing, and it's like it sounds Thank awesome, it. Yeah. sounds awesome. It's um, it's what I really really love. The style that I really love is kind of an old school sound, like orchestra sounds. Mm-hmm. Or violin, strings, trumpets, or something, and you mix in like a, a drum kit. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And her voice is really good too. It's fantastic. Really good. It suits the song so well. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? Let's talk about another song that I think goes very well together, mm-hmm. and that is uh, Sun E's new song featuring Verbal Gent and Swings with their song "Where Did You Sleep." Now. Sunny, Sani, Sunny, uh, had they all kind of have their things, but Sunny left JYP and fucking started making shit. Like he started making, making hits. hits, not shit, but hits. Like his songs have been really good. Verbal Gent has been a beast for me for a long, long time. My number one favorite song from quarter one was a Verbal Gent song, and Swings is like an up and comer that. I think he's been around for a while, but been for I a while. recently have started liking him. He has a song with Sony Gook that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been featured in other songs. Mm. So when I heard that these three dudes are going to come together, I'm like, this is either going to be the best thing in the fucking yeah. world, or th- it's not going to work horrible. together. Because if you know Korean hip-hop, these Verbal Jint and Swings are very no-name. Sunny is a little bit more up-and-coming. He's released a lot of good songs lately. Yeah. He's been featured on a lot of tracks like... Like my, Mr. Lee last that, week. My favorite part of that song is when he raps. Yeah. And and, and we mentioned this last week, but like R&B, like this kind of R&B is, yeah, is coming up in Korea. Like I hear more R&B shit than I do K-pop stuff. Um, this kind of R&B stuff. Yeah, and I'm um, I'm happy about it. Like Korean hip-hop, I'll call it Korean hip-hop. Hey, that's what I called it. Hip-hop. Hip-hop. Yeah, it's, it's catchy. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I feel like I've been saying amazing a lot, but it was these, a good week. Of there songs, was a lot of good, good and bad this week. Uh, hey, young, you're a musical. Um, I like that song. Not the dance. Oh yes. Ring a ling a ling, ring a ling a ling. Now, if I had to pick this week, which I wish I did, so ring a ling a done one, um, it would have been this song instantly, hands down. Like, um, I love. I, I think all three of them flow really well together. Mm-hmm. The song just has the good, like, uh, sun e kind of playful. Bubble Jinta? Yeah. <laughs> Bubble Jinta? Bubble Jinta? <laughs> he's got a playful rap style, which I really, really like. Sounds like he's having fun. Verbal Jinta sounds like having fun. I really like Swing's part. I actually think maybe Swing's part is my favorite. Um, and then they do, every one of them does one of those dumb things where they reference their last song. hit song, which is... <laughs> yeah. Or Real Lady with Dugurago? Swings. And Bubba Verbal Jinta was... I don't even remember which song he referenced, actually. Like, real... Um... Did you reference Walking? No, that's a Bunky song, right? Yeah, that's a Bunky song. Anyway, I, even though I like Verbal Jet, his uh, verse is the least interesting to me. Yeah, out of the um, three. Sonny is really good. Swing is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So if you didn't check this out, like we did a reaction video to this, and I oh, think that was awesome. our best reaction video. Nobody watched that. Shit. Nobody loves to watch that because nobody. I mean, these people aren't very big. Yeah. Uh, in the general international. When you talk about pop Playfield. music, these guys aren't very big. Yeah. If you're talking about Korean hip hop, these guys are giants. Yes. Right? So it just depends on who you're talking to. Yes. But I love this song. I listen to this song the most. Seriously, seriously, seriously. Check it out. Sunny, where did you sleep? Hori so just so. All right. Let's talk about the last song. You Utah. say hush. It says hush. So, Miss A's Hush, we also did a reaction video for this. Yeah, we did. And people actually agreed with us for once, surprisingly. Yes, and we weren't that positive about it. We were not positive at all. All we said was, they're fine. That's it, pretty much. And we're like, we don't really like the song. <laughs> they're fine. This is what we said. And actually, I listen to the song more. I've even said this, I think, before, but like, I don't mind the song, actually. Like, it's definitely not as good as their last couple of songs definitely a different style because it this is the first one not made by jyp it's made by e -tri is e -tri? E -tribe. E -tribe. and so definitely has a different feel to the song but i don't mind the song it's not it's not bad it's actually kind of okay for me um i think the music video aside from them being balls hot oh, Susie, Susie. Oh. i'm sorry but gia is hotter in that video than Susie is i don't even know who you're talking about because I, I thought Susie was the only one in that video What's wrong with your brain, man? There's nothing wrong with my brain. My squinty eyes. I can only see oh, one Oh, that's girl. right. This is squinty eyes. You yeah. can only see I only see one, one person at one a time. Uh, no, I, seriously, I know there are other girls, and they all did look good. Min looked really cute, Ooh. I think. Uh, Gia looked so good. Fine. Faye looked pretty, but Susie is just Susie. I'm sorry. Um, but we freely acknowledge, you know, like, she's, I think, the weakest link in that group in, in general. At least performance-wise. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and But... I just, the music video is like all the scenes were like dirty subway, dirty bathroom, dirty whatever, dirty shopping. convenience store. Yeah. Like. And it's like, okay, I don't, that's not huh? sexy. What are you doing? Like, like G-Dragon. Huh? 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 That um, sounded like Lil Wayne actually a little bit. You know, I don't, I, but like G-Dragon's entire career is just Lil Wayne's. Like, they both started really young. They both fucking write a lot of shit. They both whine and they look like skater punks. They both laugh at their own jokes in their songs. Like, they're the same people. But I like G-Dragon better than Lil Wayne. I don't like them both equally. I know. You're such a GD hater. Because I even, like, I at least like Lil... Like, I don't like rap. I don't. But there are some Lil Wayne songs that are pretty damn catchy. Um, I don't think there's a single GD song that doesn't rise above okay. I take that back. That XX is okay, is pretty. That song is, um, song but is every is other shit. GD it song I shit. don't, I don't like. But and it's back to Miss A. Back to Miss A. I it really kind of sucks for them. I think because I, they got overshadowed really quickly because like of course all the Infinity Challenge songs came out. Like fucking Taeyong came back and fucking blew that shit up. Jae Jun came back. Jae Jun came back. So I haven't heard much about Miss A. I don't even think they won anything yet. And they were still riding off of like performances. This song is good enough for me to get interested in the album, and that is Mission Accomplished, because... I did hear from one of our listeners that while Hush is not the best, a lot of the other songs in the album are pretty good. Are really good, yeah. Um, I, haven't given, I haven't given the album a full listen yet, but I plan to very soon. It's just hard to keep up with all these, you know, all these releases coming out. Yes, it is. Welcome to the K-pop podcasting world. world, where you got to listen to a lot of MVs, and a lot of them are trashy. A lot of them are very good. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, that's it for episode number 33. Um, if you made it this far, once again, we want to thank every person that listens to us. I uh, apologize for the audio quality again. Like, we, my awesome mic does not work. So we're using the MacBook mic, so it's a little sketchy. And it really sucks. Yeah, so we apologize. We're really trying to figure out where to buy a mic, but I don't know Korean. Our Korean is not 
the best. And mine is leaps and bounds above Stevens, and we still leaps can't and bounds. find a mic. Um, but we'll get on that. Um, also, side note, we're going to see the uh, IU concert. Yes, at the end of this month. Yep, in a week and a half. The 23rd, 24th, yeah, something like, like 11 that. days. Whatever that Saturday is. Um, and actually today, we bought tickets to see Shiny. Everybody. Every. And tomorrow, hopefully. Oh, dear Lord, please. If everything please. in the world goes right for Josh. Please. We're going to get oh, SNSD concert oh, tickets. Please. So. so, hey. This is why we're in Korea. But uh, until next time, I'm Steven. And I'm Josh. Everybody.